What's going on, America? This is Kevin from Kevin's Corner, and I'm about to make some sense out of some nonsense. So, I'm watching Fox earlier today, and they had these two women on, and they were debating about the border crisis. It was a black lady and a white lady. The black lady was a Republican. The white lady was a Democratic, you know, uh, I guess, strategist which was brilliant from Fox. You know, I like the fact that they put a black Republican up there against a white Democrat because, you know, most people probably assume as soon as they got up to, oh, I'm sure the black lady's going to be the Democrat, right? But she threw a monkey wrench in it. Now, they start off talking about the issues and can they resolve this, right? So the black lady brings in practical solutions. She didn't point the fingers. She just said, you know what? They're at a stalemate right now. And I think this is a real opportunity for the president and the Democrats to come to a consensus. And she showed data. She said, because the polls show that there's a large amount of even Latinos, 50 percent at this point, to support what the president's doing concerning immigration. She said, and then you got like 70 some percent of Americans that support something for DACA. And then you got 70 some percent of Americans that does support some type of stronger border control. Um, and so. This is a great opportunity for the Democrats to get something out of this and also the Republicans. And I'm thinking, OK, OK, they're starting off and they're they're having a good conversation. And that made sense. I mean, all right. Now, your turn. Go over to the other lady and she comes right in on a whole bunch of garbage. Right. She comes right in on. Well, uh, you know, I don't see how the Democrats could accept anything that the Republicans are going to uh, offer, because first thing the president needs to do is offer an apology. He needs to come out on TV and say, I'm sorry, America, for uh, making 800,000 people not have their jobs and to get paid and blah, blah, blah. And she went right into all of this stuff. And I looked at the, the facial and body expressions of the um, black lady and she's just shaking her head like, what are you talking about? And I'm thinking in my head. What are you talking about? Now, to the untrained ear and eye, and a casual viewer of politics, they would listen to the lady, the white lady who was commentating, and would say, yeah, I mean, I feel you. They need to do something, and they need the Democrats don't need to accommodate the president because of this and this and that. That's an emotional response. She never addressed why illegal immigration is a problem. She never throughout any percentages, any facts, any numbers, any solutions, she immediately went to demonizing the president and focusing on the fact that he shut down the government and is impacting Americans' paychecks, right? Whereas the black lady identified the problem and then she started talking about a compromise and a solution. But it wasn't an emotional suggestion and a response, but hers was. Now, let me give you the difference of how conservatives interpret information and hear stuff versus liberals, okay? I have to give an analogy, or actually it's a real story. When I first came out of college, I moved down to Cincinnati, met this group of guys in my church, great singers. Now, I didn't know anything about the music industry, but I did think that I could recognize good talent when I saw it, and these guys were jamming in church every weekend, and I'm like, you know what? I think y'all could get a record deal. And they was like, you think so? I said, yeah, y'all got a manager? No. Nope. Now, here I am, bushy-tailed, bright-eyed, straight out of college, didn't know nothing about the music industry. I said, well, let me be your manager. They said, okay, because they didn't know nothing about it either. So I get on the road, and I happen to stumble across uh, a group down in Nashville doing a concert. They were a gospel rap group, and they gave me the card to their A&R director. Now, here's how ignorant I was. I didn't even know what A&R meant. Now I do, artists and repertoire. But at the time, I'm like, what is an A&R director? Didn't know how difficult it would be to even get in the office of an A&R director right in front of him because they get tapes and CDs and all that crap sent to him constantly. So they give me the number. I call him. His name was Jonathan Watkins. i never forget. I call him. Yeah, I ran into your group on tour and this and that. And they said that, you know, you're the A&R director and I, I got a group that I work with. Can I come down sometime? Now, strangely, and I mean, this is the star and the moon and everything lining up and compensating for my ignorance, okay? Normally, they never take any walk-ins, ever. Yeah, just send your tape or CD. At the time, it was tapes and CDs. Some of y'all just young watching this. What is a tape? But anyway, so they said, uh, he said, you know what? Normally, I don't take walk-ins, but 
He said, uh, I got an opening next Wednesday. Can you get down to Nashville? I said, yes, I'll make it happen. So I go down there <coughs> confident because I've been listening to the group's little demo tape and I'm thinking this is hot. So I go down, sit down in the office, <coughs> little suit and tie on. And he's like, all right, let's see what you got. I pop the cassette in. He hits play. And he's listening, and I had the smug look on my face like, yeah, wait until he get a load of this. The old joker, wait until you get a load of me. So I'm sitting there relaxed, mm -hmm, and my man's going, and he leans in, click, hit stop, and he says, do you know how quickly I would have thrown this tape in the garbage if you weren't sitting right here in front of me? And I'm like, Vroom. uh, what, what the? and he start breaking down the difference between how someone who has a trained ear to hear something professional versus a casual listener who's just listening to the beat, who's just listening to all the runs that the singers make. And he's like, listen to the background. It's not faded properly. The vocals are not mixed down equally. You can hear people doing so. I mean, he just broke it down. And he made me start to see the difference between a professional viewpoint of anything, music or whatever, versus casual. Same thing, movie industry. People who are in the movie industry, they will look at a film and they're not watching it casually. Once your eye sees something professionally, you can never unsee that. You will always be able to identify the difference between a casual viewer and a professional viewer. So now you're watching a movie, you're going, the continuity was broken. Oh man, they, they, they when they switched that scene, came back, that window was broke last time, now it's not broken anymore. Or the, the theme seems to be all over the place. So you are able to see things that, a casual viewer can't see well when you become conservative in your politics whether you were always that way or you got red peeled once you do that soon as you hear a liberal commentator or politician get up and start spewing out stupidity you recognize it off grip because you're seeing it through the professional eye you're going what you're doing is diverting you're not addressing the the topic you are preying upon people's emotions. You're not giving any solutions. You are uh, not giving any percentages. You're not giving a plan. You're simply all over the place, but it sounds good to the casual listener. So that guy who just be out there jamming like, yeah, man, let me check. I put this in my car and I'm jamming. He's not hearing it like myself now and Jonathan Watkins would have been. They would be going, that's garbage, man. That whole piece stinks. And if you weren't around me, I wouldn't even listen to this. I throw it away. So when Republicans or conservatives are listening to a commentator, there's very few conservative commentators that start talking and say, that made no sense. Or they, they missed the target or they were way off topic. Usually I'm going, yeah, that makes sense. And you're thinking to yourself while you're listening, how in the world can anybody combat that? That is a practical, well thought out process how are they going to combat that? And then you get a Democratic strategist or a Democrat that gets up and says the most dumbest thing that doesn't really combat the argument, but it sounds good to the casual listener. But to the trained ear, you're going, that was great and that was garbage. Same thing. If you watch the five, Jesse and, 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 and uh, let me see, it's Jesse. The other one is, uh, I forget the little guy. He's, he's my boy, too. Anyway, all four. Most of the time, they have four conservatives and then Juan Williams. Juan and Juan Williams. They would throw out an argument and lay it down. It makes sense. It's well thought out. Airtight. And I'm thinking, how in the heck is Juan Williams going to respond to this without sounding dumb? Okay? He has to simply be able to agree. I said, man, y'all. Y'all wrap that up in a bowl perfectly. But what does Juan do? Come out with complete nonsense all over the place. And I'm trying to even indulge myself and say, maybe if I could step back into the shoes of a casual listener or a Democrat or a liberal, could I, would that make sense to me? Sad part, it probably does and would make sense to me back then because Juan is preying upon emotions. He's throwing out accusations about potential racism in the heart. And, man, you know, I mean, well, I see it. And I'm thinking there's some Democrat, there's some liberal out there listening to Juan. Like, he's a champion. He's standing up to all four of them. And, but he's not making sense. He not, it's not practical. It's not logical. You're a casual listener. That's what you are. So when you don't have a professional trainer to detect nonsense, you will accept nonsense. 
And that's what they, they do. They listen to this lady today. I was watching her and she's talking. And I'm sure there's people like, mm -hmm, see, that's a, that's, a, that's a good point. And I'm listening to her like, how did, how did she get this gig? But they know how to package it up. They know how to sweeten it up and say it just right. So if you're a casual listener, you don't catch it. I encourage everybody to get a sharp, fine-tuned ear to know the difference between professional music and garbage. The difference between conservative politics and the Democrats' garbage. Mm -hmm. A well thought out, reasonable, practical application plan and strategy versus gibberish, blaming, identity politics, emotional rant, and accusation and demonization. Now, you've been listening to Kevin from Kevin's Corner. Find me every Wednesday, 7.30, live on YouTube and my radio blog talk show. Links in the bottom. Also, don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter. Check out Extreme Tees. They are my sponsor. And um, it's a link in the bottom. You can click on that. Put my name into the promo. You get 20% off. Kevin. Um, and then don't forget to hit like, share, subscribe, and notification button. And then also, if you want to donate to Kevin's Corner, feel free. Um, there's a link in the bottom to do that. Now, <clears throat> next time <coughs> you see those two debating, a liberal and a conservative, you'll be you had a fine-tuned ear like, yeah, that is garbage what she's saying. And if I didn't have a professional ear, I would have been like, yeah, that sounds all right. Yeah, but now that my ears fine-tuned, I tuned it up, that's garbage. Anyway, see you next time in Kevin's Corner.